Thanks for lunch, Jackie. No problem. So, I mentioned before that going forward, I really wanted to look at the individuals as opposed to events. So, these next group of videos, I really focused on people that were connected to Fells Point in one way or another. So, the first video is actually on the Pride of Baltimore 2, which is a replica of the Baltimore Clippers and is really indicative of Baltimore and its history. And the interview I actually got was, I mentioned before I talked with Captain Jamie, who is one of the captains of the Pride of Baltimore 2. This is that interview. Now, we are on the Pride of Baltimore II. Could you tell us a little bit about the Pride of Baltimore II? Pride of Baltimore II is not an exact replica of any one privateer from the War of 1812, but she's historically evocative of the whole class. The Baltimore Clipper, as a moniker for this type of Chesapeake Bay sleek built design, uh, is a tremendous coup for Baltimore that was only possible because of the daring actions of the Baltimore privateers, because this design was used all throughout the Chesapeake Bay. And prior to the War of 1812, people mostly saw it when they were coming into the mouth of the bay um, in the form of the Virginia pilot schooners going out to meet the seagoing ships with the pilot who had the knowledge to bring them in. And so everyone knew them as Virginia pilot schooners. Well, if there hadn't been a War of 1812, they would still know this sleek Chesapeake Bay design only as a Virginia pilot schooner. So Baltimore's success with the privateers claimed our stake over the, all of the Chesapeake Bay design that preceded it um, by, by using it in a, a more effective and, and world-ranging way than it had ever been done before. Which is why it's now the Pride of Baltimore. Yeah, the Pride of Baltimore, yeah. It's the, and, and is a Baltimore clipper, not a Chesapeake Bay clipper. Excellent. Was this an effective way of getting around? Say, I, in the past, I get, you know, we have engines now that, mm -hmm. that make things a lot easier, but was this a really effective way? It's hard to imagine just seeing the ship in a modern context, what the whole rest of the, the Chesapeake Bay looked like at the time. I mean, the, the predecessors to the privateers were being used in, in the Chesapeake Bay, which is a relatively protected water. They had very sharp built, very sleek hulls um, for windless days like today to make the most efficiency of sailing around. And then they put on clouds and clouds and piles of, of canvas uh, to make them go when the wind wasn't blowing. And your other alternative, while it might have been slow going sailing, was that there weren't a lot of roads, so you might be hacking your way through a forest or wilderness. If there were roads, they were probably dirt, and if it rained for any period of time, like it does a lot in the spring here, then no wagon would, would have a chance of making it through. And even still, we have about 97 uh, tons worth of cargo space on board Pride of Baltimore too. You could almost say that this was the backbone of our expansion, at least through the coast. Oh, I think all over the country, yeah, especially north to south along the east coast, it, it played a great role of course without ships we would have never ended up coming to the new world right. in the first place so this is a history that people really just shouldn't ignore or forget because it really built us it is it's where it's where we came from I mean, in the eastern part of the country we owe most of our industry most of our our foundation to seaborne travel what is the history of this particular boat? Why a replica? Pride of Baltimore II was built following the loss of the uh, Pride of Baltimore, which was a sailing vessel that was built in the 1970s by the city of Baltimore in order to, to, to further the waterfront renaissance that was going on under Mayor Schaefer. That whole time she carried the message of Baltimore as a place not only in history but in the modern era of uh, maritime activity and, uh, and a place to come see and visit to enrich yourself. And, and the, the Pride 2 is taking on that tradition? And Pride 2 was built in a direct response to the citizens of Baltimore wanting to replace Pride of Baltimore after she was lost at sea in 1986. And do you go all around the world with this? This ship's actually been uh, much further than her predecessor. The vessel's been to Europe five times. Uh, actually sailed to Asia about 14 years ago on a, a voyage to, to help uh, engender some relationships between the Maryland Port Administration and some ports in, uh, in China and Japan and uh, in Korea as well. The ship is living history. Do you find that having a relic like this helps 
preserve history in a way that just textbooks don't. Oh, absolutely, because you can you could write all day long about what a privateer looked like or what the experience of sailing a privateer was, but to actually have people out on board and to have them put their hands on the, the lines, to see the sails set, everything that an 1812 privateer would have been familiar with can, can be seen on board this vessel. And if you brought some of those guys back from Thomas Boyle's Comet or Chaucer herself, uh, jo Joshua Barney's Rossi crew would come on board and could make sense of what we're doing today. So oddly enough, there's almost like layer upon layer upon layer of preservation. Not only is this a living historical ship, but then you have to keep a maintenance up to, per, to preserve it. But the maintenance that you're doing is preserving a history of maintenance and that so was already was done. done. Yeah. I think you find that in a lot of things. If you're going to do things a traditional way, you have to well, you have to learn all the skills to, to continue to do them and in a traditional way. Right this, in the same way that you made the comparison to the modern yachts, if you came on board uh, Pride of Baltimore II with the expectation of sailing her like she was a J-22 or a, a J-70 is the new vessel that I saw out there today, um, you would have a very difficult time with the reality that those things wouldn't work. What's on the horizon for the Pride of Baltimore too? Well, oh, oh, earlier this week, two days ago, in fact, she celebrated her 25th uh, launching anniversary, so 25th wow. birthday. Um, that's a quarter century. The ship is built so strong that it's e very easy to imagine with the kind of care that we've given her, uh, she could last a full century and, and possibly more. I see what you mean about a lot of information. This was almost a documentary by itself. I have to say this was one of my favorite episodes because I'm really into historic ships and I get to ride on this historic ship and work on the rigging and that was just incredible.